Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinets Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinets. Our guest today is Ishmael Omande. Ishmael, are you ready to be great today? Yes, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Ishmael is, is humble with a huge personality, and his professional diligence is what makes life exciting. He has lived in China, Hong Kong, Kenya, and Dubai, playing professional basketball. He has garnered res resourceful knowledge being around different cultures. His professional career started at the University of Texas Arlington, having played in the NCAA, and he later transferred to Dallas Baptist University, where he helped the Patriots win a basketball championship. After trying out for the four different NBA teams, he opted to play overseas. During this time, he started his nonprofit Big Dream, Big Dream Vision to help, help, to help orphans around the world. During this time, Ishmael fell in love with real estate in Dubai and has worked there for two years selling apartments, and the tallest building in the world. He also has an MBA from West Texas A&M University, and he has a, he is married to the beautiful Ashley Ashley, and they've risen to the top. Uh, he has risen to the top of his careers. Ishmael, thank you for being here. Today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate that. So, let's go into your background. You you started. You're from Kenya, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, I was born in Kenya, and uh, when I was born in Kenya, it was a great journey you know, just being in Kenya to the United States and transferring here. So um, what part of Kenya did you grow up in? I grew up in Nairobi, Kenya. So that's where I was born. And, uh, you know, when I, I was born in Kenya, I had a great time there, you know, with uh, great friends. And, you know, growing up there was a really nice time, you know, growing up with in a different cultural place, you know. And uh, it was so uh, different, you know, looking at that uh, perspective, you know, comparing here to the United States. But uh, growing up in Kenya was a really, really uh, nice time. And I, I always remember that time, you know, growing up there. So talk about the process coming to the United States. Well, first of all, why United States? Why not like Britain or Germany or some other right. place? Why the United States? Actually, the most important thing, you know, United States is the you know, is the, the best country in the world. You know, that's, that's to my perspective. That's the best country. And I wanted to get the American dream. And I wanted to make sure that I push myself to the next level. But anyway, I'm going to just talk a little bit of myself uh, just growing up in Kenya uh, because that's where uh, my roots are, are from. And when, I, you know, uh, just growing up, was, it was a difficult uh, time for me when my parents actually died by the age of nine years old. And that was a really, really hard time time when uh, my, my mom had a pneumonia, you know, when uh, she actually passed, you know, it really hurt me. I have actually seven siblings and I'm the last uh, in the my youngest, family. I'm the youngest, youngest in my family. So, you know, I'm the baby, but I, I actually I'm the biggest. So <laughs> I, I grew up to be, you know, the tallest in my, my whole family. So how tall are you? Like six, eight, six, nine? Yeah. Uh, right now I'm, I'm six, eleven. Six, eleven. Yes. Yes. But back when I was um, my, my, my was in Kenya, I was playing with the chill, with kids. Everybody, you know, thought I was, uh, you know, I really, I, I was kind of old. I was older than the other kids because I was just tall. I was big and tall. And uh, the kids were running uh, with me and some of them were just right on my knees, you know, and we were running and playing everywhere. And, you know, it was an ex exciting time, you know. Uh, but when my uh, parents, uh, my mom died at the age of, of nine, you know, it was really, really tough for me because, you know, she was everything for me. I loved her so much and, uh, you know, it really broke my heart and uh, I just had to, you know, pick, pick my, uh, you know, uh, pick it from there and move on and, 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 and be, you know, whatever God has called me to be. What, is, what does it mean to be an orphan? Because like, is it? You, you've lost both your parents. You have no brothers and sisters. What What is an orphan? Uh, what it means to be an orphan, actually, is just uh, when you don't have that uh, source of support, you know, like especially the, your parents, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, uh, your parents are the ones who are, you know, going to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And when I lost uh, my mom and then, uh, you know, a year uh, I went ahead and lost my father. And that actually uh, was really tough for me, you know, uh, you know, just being an orphan is just, uh, you know, not having that, uh, you know, somebody being there and providing, you know, and you just got to, you know, do what you got to do to provide for yourself as a yeah. child. You know, we, you're not supposed to work. You're supposed to, yeah. you know, enjoy life and, you know, and just, you know, be with your parents and, and let them take care of you. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, I, I, that's how I feel. I have a feel for most of the offense out there. And I step up and, and touch the lives of offense through myself. So how did the process go for you coming to the United States? Actually, coming to the United States, that's, that's, that's big because uh, I, uh, when I, I was uh, uh, at the age of uh, uh, 13 years old, I picked up basketball. So when I picked up basketball because of my heart, I'm, I was tall, I was big. And, I, you know, uh, one of my coach, Coach Kerry, got me and, you know, he told me, you know, uh, you better jump on this game. You are tall and big and you got to, you know, let's go. Let's do you, it. You can't, you can't teach tall, right? Yeah, you can. You, you can't know, teach right. tall. <laughs> you're, you're taller or not. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I went ahead and, uh, you know, just started uh, uh, playing basketball, you know, at uh, 13, 14 years old and uh, picking the uh, game of basketball. I just got into it. I loved it. I loved the game. I loved the, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, blocking shots and, and, and being, being aggressive on the court. I just fell in love with it. And uh, that really helped me to get uh, me a, a scholarship at a private uh, academy called St. Austin's Academy in Nairobi uh, with uh, the, the uh, principal of the school is Mrs. Lee, Radhika Lee, really nice uh, principal that really helped me. And she brought me in uh, to a private academy. And, and through that, you know, we got, I got a scholarship to the United States. But people don't know, how many people live in Nairobi? I uh, Nairobi, uh, I would predict probably uh, two, three million people in Nairobi. Okay. You know, Nairobi is the smallest province, you know, you know in, in Kenya. But uh, total in Kenya is 40 million people. Yeah, so off the, off the subject a little bit, talk about this. Like, I think in America, we have this stereotype of Africa, like being like downtrodden, you know, poor, right. not advanced. But Nairobi is actually kind of like tech advanced, right? Oh, definitely, like, like, definitely. Uh, can you talk yeah. about that, son? Uh, yeah, it's very tech advanced. And most people uh, think that, you know, they, they, they look at the media and it gives them a different uh, look, a different picture of what Africa and Nairobi or Kenya is, uh, different countries. But if you actually come there, you're going to see that, you know, there's cars, there's buses, you know, there's transportation, there's uh, television, there's, you know, it's actually developed, you know, just like here in the United States. But the thing is, you know, the, the in infrastructure is not that uh, as strong like here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are lacking a lot of things and we are behind because we are dealing with uh, probably uh, political instability. Uh, we're dealing with uh, corruption from the government. So things like that, we, we don't have the, the right system. But at the same time, but, but uh, just uh, being honest, you know, yeah. we have a good uh, country, you know, that is developed and is really nice. Yeah. You know. So that's, that's that's the most important thing. Yeah, um, right, right. I think once people don't realize, I think in I have these numbers right, but I think in Africa there's actually a higher cap capacity of higher percentage use of cell phones versus the United States. I think I think more people actually have cell phones right in Africa than here. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have cell phones because uh, you know you you have even kids right now mm -hmm. they have cell phones. You know you you'll be surprised. You know you have kids playing video games and. Uh, uh, we have a game, they have uh, all types of Xbox and, 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 you know, just ES sports, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really engaged, you know, and uh, kids, they are very, very uh, smart and knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's, it's just amazing to see the level of, of, of te technology yeah. there in the, uh, you know, in, 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 in Kenya in particular, you know? Yeah. So how do you, okay, back to how you came to the United States. Did, did, was it a program you joined or did someone so, in Kenya happy with that? Yeah, yeah. So, so like I said, you know, I was in, in the private academy uh, through the Radhika Lee, you know. Uh, so I went, I was in St. Austin's Academy and uh, we won a championship there, you know. So when we won a championship, uh, you know, I actually won two championships in Kenya, you know, national high school championships. So because I was that good, mm -hmm. you know, we had great teammates and uh, came over uh, to the United States uh, with uh, the school, the academy. Because uh, we got, a, I got a, 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 some schools wanted to look mm -hmm. at me in, uh, here in the United States, and uh, I got a, a look at a school in uh, Pensacola, Seattle, and uh, it was really good, you know, opportunity for me. So how often do like scouts from the United States go to Kenya or different African countries, like to scout talent? Yeah, so so that's that's the that's the thing. So uh, it's it's really rare to find just most uh, coaches just going back uh, to find talent. So uh, it's really hard, and most of the time you're gonna see uh, uh, in organization like uh, 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 NBA Africa, mm -hmm. like uh, you know uh, Basketball Without Borders, are mm -hmm. stepped up to go find mm -hmm. that talent, you know, in different parts of Africa. And that's why I'm really, really proud of 
you know, NBA Academy and things like that, you know, seed project that came up with uh, Amadou Gallo Fall in Senegal, you know, just to find talent of, in Africa and bring them to the United States so that they can also get these opportunities that don't, they don't have. So, uh, I'm, 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 you know, but still, we're still behind with, you know, coaches going back and finding the, the, the talents, you know, in different parts, you know, because you might find like parts like in South Africa or deep parts like in, uh, you know, Tanzania or, 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 or deep in rural areas like in Kenya, you know, there's no, uh, uh, there, there, there's, there's challenge, but the, the opportunities, there's no opportunities for some, most of these good kids who can really, who are really talented. Did you speak English when you came to the United States for the first time? Oh, yes, because uh, my country is actually, uh, uh, is, uh, the English language is our second language. Okay. So I did speak English and, uh, you know, British English. So the, the, the uh, proper English, exactly the, the so the English. proper <laughs> English. Well, you know, when when I tell my wife, you know, get get uh, something off the uh, boot, <laughs> she thinks like it's a boot, you know, where the shoe boot, but actually it's the trunk, you know. So you know, if you say uh, truck, you know, is uh, that uh, they say truck in America, we say lorry. Okay, you know what I mean. So it's kind of a little bit different, but you gotta, you know, when you come to America, you gotta try to adjust and you know, just try to, you know, blend in the culture. So how many languages do you talk, do you speak? So I speak actually uh, three languages okay. and I'm trying to pick Chinese a little bit, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I love, uh, and I'm trying to pick up Spanish, but I speak uh, English, Swahili, I speak Luo, that's my mother tribe, mm -hmm. you know, that's fluent for me right now, you know. So how many tribes, explain the concept of tribes, how many tribes are there in Kenya? So uh, in Kenya, actually, there's 42 tribes. We have a lot of tribes, and the biggest tribe is uh, the Kuyu tribe, you know, and uh, the, the next is Tambor and then Luo. So the, this 40, the, other, the other tribes, you know, is, is, uh, you know in, uh, they are not uh, really big, you know, but uh, they, have a, they, they also have a say when it maybe it comes to election and things like that, but there's a lot of tribes in Kenya. And also even Tanzania, you know, we have, a, there's a lot of tribes in different parts of Africa, you know, so we have to find a common language and that's Swahili. So I speak Swahili and that's a common language that people use, you know, to talk and uh, communicate between each other. Are these tribes competitive or they like against each other or it's more collaborative or it's like teamwork because like, it's like a big battle every day. With these oh, tribes. definitely. Definitely. You're talking about uh, when you come to politics, you're talking about Democrats and Republicans. You're talking about you know, uh, communism and capitalism, you know, so you're talking about a Kikuyu tribe and a Luo tribe, people are trying to be in power, you know what I mean? You're talking about Luya tribe, they want to be in power. So like in Kenya, you know, we see uh, from our first president, uh, Jomo Kenyatta, he was uh, from the Kikuyu tribe, okay? And uh, the second, uh, uh, the vice president was actually Luo, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. So uh, when, uh, uh, during the presidency of Jomo Kenyatta, uh, Jomo Kenyatta actually uh, uh, fired or, or just uh, took uh, vice president out of uh, the office. You know, he took him out. And so there was a lot of tension since then, you know, from the Kikuyu tribe and the Luo tribe. And uh, they, people felt like uh, the Kikuyu tribe was holding uh, the leadership uh, just to themselves, you know. So there was a lot of tension building. But then you find uh, Jomo Kenyatta handed it over to a Kalenjin tribe. The Kalenjin tribe actually is a uh, the second actually largest uh, pop, uh, tribe uh, uh, after Kikuyu. So you have Kalenjin tribe and uh, President Arap Moise was the second president of the United States, of, of actually Kenya, not the United States. I wish he was <laughs> in the United States, but actually in Kenya, he was the second president. And then we have uh, the third president was uh, from Kikuyu tribe, you know, Mwai Kibaki and fourth president from Kikuyu tribe, uh, you know, Uhuru Kenyatta. So uh, this, the trend whereby people are seeing that, you know, it's only Kikuyu is taking over, you know, has created a lot of tensions. And that's why we had a lot of, uh, you know, chaos and a lot of political, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, violence in the, the year of 2007 because of the tensions between uh, tribes, you know. Okay, so yeah. you, you're, you're finished in high school in the United States. Right. Talk about the recruiting process. How do you get to the University of Arlington? So, so uh, once I came uh, here to the uh, United States, actually, I went to uh, the school in Pensacola and, you know, I got a, a scholarship in uh, UTA, you know, just uh, because I was playing a little and bit. And that's your first time in Texas, I'm yes, assuming? Yes, that's the first time in Texas. I got a school scholarship in the University of Texas, Arlington, you know, but under Coach Cross. So I really 
uh, gave me a, a booster. Uh, so when I got there, you know, I played ball uh, in the NCAA, you know, lower division one, but it, it was a really amazing, uh, you know, time for me, you know, being part of that. So talk the about the, the how it this, like the cultural um, things you had to go through going from Kenya, United States. I'm sure there's a lot of culture changes, right? Like live in America. Oh, that, yeah. Talk about the challenges. With oh, that. There's, there's a lot of uh, difficult ch challenges actually living in the United States. The first thing is actually just being uh, uh, from uh, uh, just be having a different color. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just uh, being, uh, 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 you know, just when, when, when you come here, you know, people see you different. You know what I mean? Yes, you're a black person, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you have a different, uh, you know, you, you, you have an accent. You know what I mean? You have an accent from maybe you, because you're speaking Swahili and Luo, so there's an accent. So you are not African-American, you see what I mean? And, uh, but you are African with a different accent. And, you know, so that's a challenge because you are trying to adapt, you see what I mean? And be, be you know, accept, you feel like your sense of being accepted in the community, you know what I mean? So you want to be, be uh, feel like you want to blend in the community. And that's where, you know, it's get a little bit challenging and, and uh, people also, actually also another challenge is when people look at Africans, they, they think like we are from the bush. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we just go out and, you know, and, and just, we don't, we don't wear clothes, whatever, you know, uh, but uh, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, how people see it, you know, and, you know, when you, when you hear, you're like, okay, I'm not you know, from the bush. I'm, <laughs> I'm really civilized. I'm a civilized person. So. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, uh, that's kind of difficult, you know, just, yeah. to, you know. That's funny. So coming here from Kenya, how mm -hmm. was the, the um, how to put this, how does like the, the American, African-Americans accept you? Was they, they, they treat you like a black American, you know, mm -hmm. so you're from Africa, you're from somewhere else. Right. How that all that So, so with, the, with the, that's actually a very interesting question you asked me. I like that because uh, actually being an African and, 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 and engaging with African-Americans is really tough. Because number one, if you even see uh, how uh, the, the uh, if you see uh, the whole uh, culture here, you know, with the uh, whites and uh, African Americans and Hispanics, you know, there is a lot of also tensions because also there is a lot of you know uh, people are trying to you know uh, get you know better jobs and you know and and yes, you know, discrimination comes into play, you know, racism is still there, you know, so you see also African-Americans, they want those opportunities, you know, that white people have, you know, and, and it's, it, it gets a little bit difficult and you have an African person coming and trying to get the same opportunity, you know what I mean, as a, uh, you know, an elite person, you know, so there's a lot of tension, a little bit tension, I would say, with African-Americans and Africans, you know, and, and, and there's, uh, you know, that friction, you know, that, hey, you know, you are not better than me, I'm better than you. So uh, the same way, you know, there's that tension whereby also African-Americans feel like they are so better and they don't want, they feel like, I don't want to go, you know, and I, I feel like most African-Americans, you won't find them going back to Africa. You know what I mean? You find white people going back to Africa, mm -hmm. but not African-Americans because mm -hmm. they feel, you know, hey, this is uh, better than Africa. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? So if you already feel that this is better than Africa, you all, all also feel that this is you are better. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yourself, because you don't, you can't even take that step to go back. So that tension is still there because I remember when I was playing basketball, I had a lot of tensions with my teammates. You know, frictions like, hey, you know, you're good, but you know, when they realize that I'm really good in class, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you get a lot of respect. So I would, I would just encourage a lot of Africans who come here just to work hard and just do it through your actions. You don't want to do it through words. Through words. Through, through your actions, work hard, stay focused, and just push yourself, you know, and just practice to be better. Okay. So you played basketball at University of Arkansas for years. Right. Then you transferred, I think it's called Dallas Baptist Then, then I went to Dallas Baptist University, yes. Um, can you talk about why you transferred? Uh, I, I transferred, you know, uh, I went to Dallas Baptist University uh, because I, I felt, uh, you know, at that time, that was the best, uh, you know, mm -hmm. situation for me. Okay. You know, because uh, I, in, in, in the University of Texas, Arlington was great. You know, it was a great school. Uh, but I, you know, just uh, being there, you know, there was also a lot of frictions, you know, from um, players and, you know, coaches. And it was it was in the right situation for me at that time. And when I went to Dallas Baptist University, you know, 
I, I really had to change my uh, a lot of my character, my mm-hmm. attitude, and things like that. So help you grow as a and person. Help me grow as a person, as a man, because I got a coach, uh, Coach Flickner. Flick, Flickner, really nice coach who teaches you how to uh, grow as a man of God, to have faith, and uh, those are the things that I grew up with uh, with my father. You know, my father is is a Christian man. He's a good man of God, and teaches somebody. And t- he taught me. And taught my family how to grow up as uh, people of faith and men of faith, and uh, you know, just being in, uh, in in Dallas Baptist, I felt that I felt that back to me. I felt my dad back, you know, in my life. So it really helped me, you know, you know, in my in my journey, just to be wherever you know God wanted to me. And Adela Baptist, you actually won the championship, correct? Yes, we that won meant the that had to be a great feeling, there. right? Yeah, it was a great feeling. You know, it was a tough. Uh, you know, it was, it was tough, you know, during the, the semifinals because we went to three overtimes, mm-hmm. you know, and we finally got it done, you know, in the final. So it was great. And so you, fin- you finished college and then you decided to get your MBA, correct? Exactly. Why did why why get an MBA? Uh, the main reason for an MBA, actually, when I was a kid, I didn't tell you, I used to sell pep popsicles. So okay. it is just business is just in my blood. You know, I used to sell popsicles and I, I used to make good money and keep money very you know, uh, I used to uh, budget. I, I'm, I used to put my budget together in, in, and make sure that I, I'm, I'm responsible. You know, it's about responsibility. So with that, you know, just motivated me to do business, you know, and, uh, you know, just doing my master's, you know, it just is an elevation for me, you know, to another level, you know, just to be able to uh, get to the corporate world, business world, and you know, push me to understand more about business and be out there to serve you know the people you know around the globe. So you brought up something I forgot, I forgot about. Talk about some of your side hustles in, in college. Like I believe you did some. Did you need some like sell stuff at Trader's Village? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah talk yeah. about those side hustles. Oh, talk, about, yeah, like, yeah. talk about your entrepreneurship spirit. Right, always like right. being a hustle on. Always like trying to get ahead. Talk about some of that. Oh why, yeah. Why is that important? Always trying to get ahead. Always trying to get better. Always trying to stay focused. Being better than yesterday, that's my focus. And when I was uh, actually uh, in, 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 the co- in college, I, you know, I used to uh, go to Trailers Village. Trailers Village is a flea market, if you guys don't know. I used to go to there, I was selling uh, CDs, you know, where uh, that's when uh, Lead Wayne was uh, really good, you know, real Wayne, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, pop, popping bottles, you know, I, I loved him, you know, and it, it, was, it was a great time, you know, and sold a lot of uh you know cds uh made uh some money for my, my uh myself also or just to help me through school because it's tough you know sometimes in, in college you just have to take care of yourself you you don't have anybody giving you handouts you don't have anybody anybody giving you money i, ha- I wish i had parents and that's why being an orphan is tough because you have to take care of yourself you have to get it done okay so i flipped cds and i was like Hey, I gotta make it happen. I sometimes I went to the to the uh, thrift store. I took jackets and I bought some jackets for like fifteen dollars. And I went to the flea market and I flipped it for like two thirty thirty dollars. You know, so that's fifteen dollars uh, profit. And if I did I did like twenty of them, I made at least like a thousand two thousand dollars just doing working Saturday Sunday and just in the flea market. You know, staying focused. And that's what uh, I'm saying. That business is in my blood. Business is in my blood. I love it so much, guys. And it's just about the hustle. It's about the grind. It's about staying focused because you can be smart, but that just is it's not everything. You know what I mean? You got to go be above and beyond. And that's what I did. And this, know, this, is, this is you back when you was a little kid, right? You know, you were doing entrepreneurship as a little kid, right? Like yeah. you said, like. Exactly. So question for you do you think entrepreneurs are made or they're or, or as a learned skill like someone just wake up one day at six, right. six years old i'm gonna go like me when i was younger you know how you like you go cut people's grass yeah are you knocking the door cut your grass yeah 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 i would just start cutting the grass <laughs> i would just cut the grass like what are you doing kid i'm cutting yeah, the grass you just yeah, go ahead 20 and do bucks. It. <laughs> i didn't actually do it well yeah, and yeah. i would leave and you finish the grass i, I you just cut half yeah, yeah you didn't pay me right right <laughs> so, like, so, so do you think it's, it's, it's when you learn as a skill? You, it's a skill uh, you have. I think I think it's a, mostly it's a learning a skill. Yeah. You know, you gotta you know uh, go through it. You know, some people yes, you know, you got might find some people. Let, let's say for example, like LeBron James. He's he's a talented player. You know, he's a really talented player. You know what I mean? And but LeBron James became much more greater because he put he put work in his talent. You see what I mean? So uh, the same question comes to uh, just 
uh, you know, being a, a grinder and a being out there, you know, be, being able to be a leader. You know what I'm saying? To be a leader, you know, you got to, you know, you got to uh, do it through action. You know what I mean? You got to go out there and, and, and make it happen. You know, use your hands, you, you know, go out there and just do it. Just do it, you know, and, and, and knock doors, knock on doors. And, and that's how it happens. And, you, you know, you build your, you, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to help you to elevate as a leader and be better. You know, talk about the points of you mentioned earlier of getting better every day, right? And improving yourself. Talk about the points of, of that to you. Uh, that's so important to me because, uh, you know, if you don't get better every day, you, you never succeed in life. You know what I mean? Because you gotta be able to sharpen uh, yourself. You know what I mean? With also the right people around you. You know, as uh, iron sharpens iron, so as I'm one man sharpens another. Having the people that's going to help you and uh, having uh, good mentors around you. So that uh, is very important, you know. So next talk about, you know, what's the saying? You know, you're, you're the you're the average of five people around you. Right. Talk about, you know, you have two scenarios. One person has like a bunch of, you know, negative people around him. They're not doing nothing with lives. And someone else has like great people around them. The, 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 the skill sets you for each one. Like, like the one, to me, the one person that with negative people, he's not going to do anything with life. Yeah, the person with great mentors, people doing things, and like actually involved and become better, right? Talk about the points of having like great people around you. You know, there's a scenario, man. I will talk to you about it. You know, when you are, uh, you know, my dad used to say, if you uh, see four drunk people and you hang out with uh, them, you're gonna be the fifth drunkard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So you know, basically, that just shows it. You know, if you hang out with for billionaires, you're going to be the fifth billionaire. Yeah. You see what I mean? So it's very important to choose the people you hang out with. You know, that's like major. You know, that's what even I tell my uh, the kids that I have for my nonprofit. You know, when you go to school, hang with the right people. Be with the right people because when you, are, when you, when you, when you have a friend that you don't even know about and he's driving you and he has drugs in the dashboard and the cops stop you, you are part of it, and yeah. you didn't know about it. So, how, you know, buzz of a feather, flock together. So, to, 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 so there's someone out there, right? Somebody in high school, the case would be, he has like four horrible friends, right? There's, but he's been friends in six elementary school, friends for a long time. Right. How does this person break away from them without feeling guilty or, you know, bad? You know, they've been my friends forever. They help me with stuff. How do, I, how do you advise them to, you know, break free and find a new group of friends? Uh, I'm, I'm so strict with that. You know, most, most importantly is you can be a good friend, you can be my best friend, whatever, but are you doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Are you doing the right thing? Are you doing the right thing? If you're not doing the right thing, then you don't deserve to be somebody's friend. If you not, uh, if you not, don't have a good character, you don't have a good attitude, you know, you don't deserve to be that person's friend. You see what I mean? So I basically, even my kids, I tell them straight, I throw your head, you got to let it go. I had a friend, uh, you know, in college and, uh, you know, when uh, one time we went to Walmart, he was, you know, getting stuff, you know, and I told him, I, I, I can't, I can't hang out with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And after a, 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 a year or two, he got arrested. You see what I mean? So you got to make a decision swift. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, this is your life. You see, great point. Yes, Ismo, talk about you know as an entrepreneur, and we're talking about your real estate business a little bit. Uh, being able to get used to hear the word no all the time, right? I think a lot of people start a business and they hear no and they fall apart, right? Talk about how do you deal with hearing no all the time? In this world, you're gonna be, it's gonna be always no. I've you know just there's nowhere you're gonna have a yes, okay? And that's what I have had through all my life. You know, so I even uh, people who out there, I would advise them, yes, you're going to have a no. You knock on the door, no. They shut the door on me all the time, every time. I, I remember one time when I knocked on uh, this white guy's door and he pulled a, pulled a gun on me. I was like, oh, my bad, you know, I, you know, it's good. And I walked out. But the thing is, you're going to have even a bigger no than you expect, you know. So it is part of life, but we got to turn those no's to yes. You know, you, we got to turn them to yes. And the way we turn them is to keep on knocking, keep on knocking, keep on knocking, keep on knocking. It's just like, you know, you, you want to, uh, 
you know, if you if you're looking for 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 gold, you know, you you trying to uh, uh, mine. If you people who see who are mining and doing stuff like that, you know, you are digging. You know, if you are digging for gold, you know, you, you are keep on digging, keep on digging, keep on digging, keep on digging. Is a no. Every time you dig is a no. Every time you dig is a no. But you trying to find that gold. You are trying to find that you know uh, uh, precious gold. But every time you keep on digging is a no. You know, but you never stop till it, it turns to a yes. And when you get that gold, boom. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I might have the timeline mixed up in, in right. your life story, but there's a year you spent in China teaching uh, Chinese students. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Was that during college or after college? That's after college. After college. Mm -hmm. So talk about how that worked. Like how, how the opportunity come about? Like why to go to China to teach? Is this, you right. just wanted for opportunity? Was it professional development? Yeah. Or just something you just want to like, I want to go to China to have the experience. Talk yeah, that, that. that's just an experience too. You know, you want to travel to different countries and know, you know, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, people. You know, I wanted to be a global person, you know, and person who can be able to blend with other cultures, you know, and that's just uh, something to help me with my, you know, uh, you know, me as myself, you know, and being in the business world. And so you, you had never been in China before, correct? Uh, never, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. and so you, and what, like, was it like elementary school students, college students you taught yeah. English we, to? We were uh, dealing with college students, you know, and, uh, you know, it was great, you know, college students. And, and, and what city was it? It was in Chongqing, China. And was that in China? Uh, and, that's in the South. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you had a pretty good experience with that? Oh, pretty good, great experience. And so Love you went it. there, you know, I'm guessing you get speaking in Chinese, right? So it's just basically you spoke English to them and they had, to, they had to pick it up? Yeah, they had to pick it up. Uh, but also, you know, I had to uh, get uh, my uh, tutor for me to learn Chinese. And mm -hmm. that's how I started speaking Chinese a little bit, you know. So you're from Kenya, living mm -hmm. in America, right? now working in China. Yeah. So you're dealing with all three different cultures? And all three different cultures, you know, and trying to learn a different language, you know, just trying to, you know, be uh you know be bigger so two-part question well, i'll start in the united states first so you went for kenya united states what's something that surprised you about the united states that's something you were not expecting uh the food mm -hmm. oh yeah the food uh is you know make you bigger <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely you know i feel that it's more uh, probably human hormones or something yeah. you know or something i don't know <laughs> or they they uh they because uh I'm surprised how they got, uh, they get a lot of chickens, mm -hmm. you know, like, everywhere, you know, so big. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this chicken is so huge, you know? So it's surprising to see that. And uh, the food has been really a surprise for me, you okay. know, just coming here and, you know, uh, the tastes mm -hmm. and also, you know, it's, uh, you know, in Kenya, we have a lot of organic food. Mm -hmm. So that organic food is uh, really kind of different. And the taste is really different here in the United States from Kenya. You know, okay. so another thing, uh, you know, I feel, you know, is is is, is has been a challenge uh, for me is just to, uh, you know, to adjust. You know, when I when I came, you know. That then, was, that then was how about China? What's something about China during your year that surprised you? Uh, China uh, really surprised me. Is uh, I would say uh, the, the the Chinese, you know, they are really really uh, actually nice people. Mm -hmm. You know, they they are really loving people. You know. Uh, you know, washi huan zhong guo, that means I really love China. So the Chinese people are really nice people, you know, and that will really surprise you, you know, and they know how to drive there. You know, people say Chinese don't know how to drive, but they do know to, how to drive in China. So that's a note for you. But uh, it's, they are really nice people. They, they love uh, people, you know, yes, they love saving face so that they don't look bad. But, you know, you come to understand that, you know, that you know, they are because they really want to present themselves better to you as a person, you know what I mean? And, you know, but I, I really love, you know, being with them. And the food was great. You know, the food was great compared to the, the Chinese food here. You know, uh, when you go to a Chinese buffet, no, I, I don't really eat yeah, a Chinese yeah, buffet in not, America no more yeah, because the Chinese food is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It yeah, is like me, we and my family were in Italy for a couple of years, right? We came back to the United States like, yeah, this this is not Italian food. This exactly. is like, like, you know, we've been to Thailand before, like Thai food here is not Thai food. It's right. like, it's Americanized, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And people have no idea what real, like, you know, you know yeah. food tastes like, you know, overseas. Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to get a little personal now. So during your time in China, you had a big life event. Yep. 
Can mm-hmm. you talk about how you pull that off? Uh, big. Uh, yeah, how you, you ask someone to marry you. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, oh, that, and, that was. And big th- time. Th- this yeah, is yeah, a great yeah. story right here. You gotta hear this story. Right. Like, this, <laughs> if you're out there, you're gonna, and you right. ask someone to marry you. You, you, you gotta follow this example, right? You, you, you can't top this. Right. Uh-huh. So yeah, it was amazing, man. And uh, I, you know, you know, my wife, my, you know, my best friend. You know, I, 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 I wanted to propose to her in a big way because it's a one-time thing, and I'm always on. On, on things like that, I'm big on 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 things you know, like that. I don't take it for granted because I believe it's something that God has given you, and God uh, has be, uh, uh, that destined that she's gonna be my wife. And I knew it in my heart, deep in my veins, in my blood. And I was like, I gotta do it right. So you know, when she came to visit me in China, you know, I arranged uh, over was over uh, I say a thousand you know, people and students were around there and, and she didn't know nothing about it. So, uh, you know, when she came out of class, she was confused and, you know, she saw about a thousand people surrounding her and, you know, and it was a great moment. I loved it. You know, we had a great uh, time and, you know, ever since we've been together and it's, it's been a great journey. That's a great you know, story. Got, yeah. So you got your MBA. Tell me again the reason why you got your MBA. Yes, I, uh, recently I got my MBA 2016. Okay. Yeah. And at the same time, you decided to become a realtor. You decided to become a realtor before or after your MBA. So I did. Uh, when I was uh, when I was in Dubai, actually, you know, when I left China, I went to Dubai. So when I was in Dubai, uh, I I was uh, playing some uh, basketball with different teams, and one of uh, uh, Brazilian guys came to me. His name is Fabio, and Fabio told me, "Hey." You're really tall. You're like a Burj Khalifa. He called me Burj Khalifa. <laughs> you know, and Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world. And I was like, oh. And he's like, you need to sell real estate. And I was like, what? I've never thought about that. And so you need to sell real estate. You know, you have good connection. I told him about my life. I told him about myself. And boom, it hit me. And I was like, I got to do this. You see what I mean? And when he showed me his paycheck, I was like, yeah. I'll I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I'll do it. You know, because I love making money and I will make it. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. And the next day I went to the office. I started, I, I got my license, everything. And I started doing real estate in Dubai. And, you know, and, 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 and at that time I was finishing, you know, uh, my, my MBA, you know, my last year. I did it online my last year at West, for West Texas. And I finished it. And it was, it was a great time, great moment, because I used that time, you know, just to uh, do uh, my thesis, you know. So how does one become a real estate agent? Is this like, I'm Jason Cavanis, I, I put a website, you, the, Jason Cavanis Realtor, is, right. what's the process? Like, uh, so, so the process, it depends with where you're working in. You know what I'm saying? Like I, when I walk in Dubai, mm-hmm. I had to have a license uh, mm-hmm. in, in Dubai. So there's a different process in a different juris, every juris, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, in Texas, it's different too. You have to have a Texas license. Mm-hmm. You have to pass the Texas test. You know, so is that so, school you have to go to so for you that? Have to, uh, you can do online, okay? Or you can do uh, in a class, like a, uh, uh, you can go to a championship school, they have it, or you can do allied uh, real estate is online, you can do it. Uh, they require 270 credit hours, mm-hmm. okay? You, then they require you to do 180 credit hours first. Once you do 180 credit hours, you can get uh, your, li- your license, your two-year license. After two years, you have to finish your 90 credit hours. And once you finish with that, then you 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 good. And I'm guessing to, this is uh, separate from your MBA, correct? Yeah. So you get MBA, and then you had to get the, all yes. the real estate separate. Right? Yes, exactly. So also, I'm gonna presume that most realtors don't have an MBA, right? Most realtors don't have an MBA because anybody can be a realtor. You can come out of high school and be a realtor. But the thing is, that's just how it is because they they really it, it, with the laws with uh, uh Texas Real Estate uh, License Association, they don't really change a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, the real estate commission, they change things, but they don't really do it. So you're going to find uh, there's a lot of uh, things that have not really been changed mm-hmm. since back in the day. But you find most realtors, they, they don't have, uh, 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 you know, that, that uh, degree, you know. Okay. But, you know, and in, in, the thing is people are going to tell you, oh, you don't need to do a, have a degree, just go and be a realtor and make money. But it does. I don't think that's a good way to do it. You've got to go have a degree. And finish a degree. Once you do it, you know it's gonna just give you that uh, level of uh, you know knowledge on what you're doing, 
and uh, you know it's very very important you know to have a degree so for your business. clients what advantage do you give your clients by having the real estate license and the master's degree what, what advantage do you give your clients oh i give my clients uh, the highest experience that i have you know just through my my education you know i know how i know how to uh you know uh, communicate with my clients you know i know how to uh negotiate for my clients to the highest level you know that's the most important thing and uh, my clients actually trust me because of that. They know the level uh, of my uh, of my education, you know, because most of the time, you know, the, my, my business guys, I, 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 I put my I have a master's degree. So with that, you know, there's that trust, there's that level of, hey, experience, you know, professional experience, you know, you know, he knows what he's doing. He knows, you know, what uh, I need. So, uh, you know, that has really helped me and they've elevated me to be uh, the top uh, realtor, you know, here in uh, the Dallas, Fort Worth and uh, in the in, in San Do you have to have a real estate license in like Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio? Or is this like, is it one no, Texas wide or has it worked? You just need a Texas license. Okay. You can sell anywhere in Texas, but you know, you, you don't want to drive all the way to San Antonio if yeah. you have a client, yeah. you know. What I do if I have a client, I will choose one of the best realtors in San Antonio, which I have, and I have best realtors even in New York. I work with realtors in uh, California, great realtors that I have relationship with because uh, through conferences and uh, each state, I have a realtor that really, really is really good and will take care of all my clients 100%. So if you guys are, have any clients wherever you are, I will take care of you because I will follow up with the process. I will be on it and I will make sure you're going to get the highest, best service you'll ever get. So Ishmael, you also do realtor stuff here in Texas and in, in Dubai. Yes. Can you talk about the difference of doing like you know, U.S. realtor and like international Dubai realtor or what's, what's the process? What's the differences or so, challenges? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, international real estate, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a different ball game. You know what I mean? I love it though. It's a different ball game. If you if you want to be an investor, it has great benefits. You know that's the most important thing. Great benefits, uh, especially when you when you are dealing with uh, investors. You know from uh, overseas. You know they, you know these investors. They they are looking for things like you know citizenship through investment. You know what I mean. So you gotta know these things. You gotta know uh, things like employment based fifth preference visas. You gotta know as a real estate agent. You gotta know what uh, a country, you know, has, you know, uh, or what, what, uh, if, what, what a country has that can benefit an investor, you know. So these are the things that I use, you know, to help most of my uh, foreign investors, mostly in Dubai, you know, when they come to invest, they have to know an area, okay? Like I, when I, I used to sell in Jumeirah, I used to sell uh, real estate in Albasha, you know, in, 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 uh, you know, in business bay. So those areas, you gotta know those areas. If you if you are if you are getting an investor who's buying business bay, you gotta know the numbers. You gotta know the comparative market market analysis. If it, is it worth it for him to invest here? And some people, sometimes you get an an investor or somebody investing in Dubai because Dubai they have skyscrapers. You know, people live in like kind of skyscrapers. But the thing is, you know, once you get somebody living in twenty eighth floor, will there is there another building coming up that's gonna block the view? So those are the things you gotta know ahead of time as a as a as an international realtor. You gotta know what is gonna happen ahead of time in the future. You know what's the future uh, uh, the, the future plans for the city. You know. So there's someone out there say either they're, they're looking to buy a house, look to sell a home. What advice do you have these this person to find the right realtor for them? What should they be looking for in a realtor? Uh, for looking for a realtor, you gotta find. Uh, you are best and a trustworthy realtor. You know, I would say uh, for you, if you try to get get a realtor, uh, the best site to go to is realtor.com. That's really good, you know, because you can find good realtors there. But, you know, you want to call me because I uh, I know the best realtors in the area. I, I work with one of the best realtors. I've been in this business for over six years now, you know, but for you, if you want to find good realtors, you know, you can just go ahead and uh, shoot me a message. I will go ahead uh, and I will, uh, I will, I will, I will take you through the ropes of getting you a, a realtor wherever you want. You know, so 
So, uh, you know, you can go ahead and, and do that through my email, ishmael at realtyagent.com, and I will help you to get any realtor you want. But you need a realtor that is trustworthy, that will negotiate for you, that will make it happen and make the deals close. You need a realtor that makes the deals close. So suppose there's someone out there and this person says, you know what, you know, having a realtor is great, but I don't see the point of spending the money or giving a commission to a realtor. I can just do it myself. Yeah. What do you tell this person who's trying to save so, money? So you're talking, when you're talking about that, you're talking about for sale by owner. Yeah. Mostly for sale by owners will be like, oh, I don't need a realtor. I will get, I will put my house on the market and get it sold, you know. And the, the problem with that is you, you know, most, most for sale by owners, especially the fast for sale by owners, they don't know what they're doing. You know, you don't know what they do, you're doing because if you sell that home and there's an issue like a plumbing issue or a, 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 a foundation issue and you didn't disclose it, you know, you can get in a lot of trouble, you know. So you have to have a realtor who will help you with all the uh, things like seller's disclosure, you know, and, and take you through the ropes of, 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 of being, you know, in, of protecting you, actually, because uh, you can end up in a, a lot of trouble if you don't uh, do it right. And uh, most uh, for sale by owners think they are saving money. Actually, they are not saving money. You see what I mean? Most for sale by owners, they don't know the comparative market analysis. They don't know uh, how much how the other house is selling. And, and, you know, they, they, they lack the, you know, the, the good knowledge of, you know, of real estate because it's like, you know, if you want to be a doctor, you know what I mean? Or if, if you know, if you go to, a, if, 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 if you want to uh, actually, uh, uh, if you are sick and you go to a doc, you go to a doctor, right? So, and you, if you're not a doctor, you can't treat yourself. You know, if, if you have cancer, you got to go to a doctor, you know? So you don't treat yourself, you don't do yourself chemotherapy because you don't, it's not your expertise, you know what I mean? So it's very good to use a realtor that knows what he's doing, that has experience in this business, and that's what I do. 24-7, I'll help you to get most money in your pocket. You're going to go ahead and sell that house. Maybe let's say that house is $230,000. You might sell it for two hundred thirty, dollars but I can get you $270,000 because I have a lot of clientele out there. I will push it out there to all my buyers. And you, I will, my goal is to make you the most money and give you the most money and put the most money in your pocket. Yes, Mo, do you have a certain clientele you try to reach out? Like you sell homes, like homes that are between like 500,000 or more, 200 mm -hmm. to 50,000. Like there, you have a certain like demographic you try to reach out to? Or you, or you take on like all comers? I'm, I'm open to all kinds of, you know, uh, business. You know, I will never turn you away. You know, I'm, I'm not uh, somebody who'll be like, oh, you're trying to get a $150,000 house. I mean, you know, you, you don't matter. You know, everybody's mad. Everybody matter in real estate. You, everybody matter. So uh, my goal is just to help anybody who's trying to sell or buy in this business. And it's actually mainly focused on the Dallas-Fort Worth area real estate market, right? Yes, it basically focuses on Dallas-Fort Worth area in this market, you know, and I love it. Can you tell me your, your like, how for this? Like, what do you see as the future of the real estate market? Is it going to be hot? You know, prices going up, prices going down, a lot of building going on. What's your, what's your, what's your, what do you think is going to happen in the next six months or a year in the real estate market in Dallas-Fort Worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing right now we are dealing with is, uh, is uh, with the prices. Prices are going way high, way high. You know, it's just ridiculous, you know. Uh, but the thing is, you know, we have low interest rates, okay? So buyers, you know, you have low interest rates. You can jump into, you know, and get a house because your interest rate is like 2.75% going down. But the problem is we have the houses are really uh, uh, go, is shooting up, you know? Uh, so it's, it's a great time to buy because of uh, the interest rates, but also, you know, you got to find the way are the, 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 because it depends also with the location. Location, location, location is the most important thing if you want to buy. So if you want to get a location, a high uh, value location, like in the mid cities here in Dallas, Fort Worth, yes, you're going to pay a little bit high, like $400,000, but you know, you're going to have a lower interest rate. So, so in six months, probably, you know, I'm looking where I buy, where I buy, you know, I'm not saying the market is going to crash. You know, I'm just saying that, you know, it might fall down a little bit slightly. So if someone's looking to buy a house, you know, a new house, 
does it really matter if they buy a house that's maybe five, seven years old or a house they're going to build from the ground up? Uh, so actually, uh, uh, for somebody, it depends. Everybody has, you know, what they want. Okay. Everybody depends with whatever you want. Uh, if you want a new build home, you can go ahead. It depends with your family size. Some people are downsizing. If you're downsizing, you know, you want to go to a, a, a smaller home, a town home, you know, you can go with a pre-owned home, you know. So most of the, most of the time, you know what I mean, it just depends because also it depends with your, how much you are qualified for, how much you are pre-approved for. You see what I mean? You might be pre-approved for 250000 That's all you got pre-approved for. So you can get a brand new home with a $250,000 house, $250,000 pre-approval amount. You have to go ahead and get you a pre-owned home that is a little bit smaller, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, you know. How about the points of, of credit scores in, in, in towards buying a home? Yeah, so it uh, depends. Credit score is, uh, is a big factor. Credit score, credit score, credit score. You know what I'm saying? So this is really big. And a lot of people fail the test because they don't have good credit scores. And credit score is, is huge because uh, banks look at it, whatever you go. Maybe if you go buy a car, they're going to look at your credit score. So with the houses, they're going to look at your credit score. So we are looking at 620 credit score and above. So I would urge you guys, how, if you can get 620 credit score and above, you can get a government loan, a Federal Housing Administration loan, Freddie, Freddie May, Freddie Mark loan. You can get you a conventional loan. You can get you a, a VA loan, a veterans as a loan. Uh, if you are VA, you get your VA loan with 0% down payment. And if you have cash, it's well and good because you're going to go ahead and close in less than 10 days. Is there an advantage to like, Suppose someone wants to buy a house for $250,000. Is there a advantage for me coming to you and say, hey, Ishmael, I have $250,000 cash? Or does that, does that matter? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, most of the time, you know, as a, as a seller's agent, you know, or uh, with uh, my client, the first thing we look at is cash, you know, and then we're going to look at conventional loan because you come with 5% down payment, you know, and then the next thing we're going to look at is the government loan because it's 3.5% down payment. And then VA, you know, 0%. But it just depends with every situation because uh, it depends with every offer. Every offer comes differently. Some people are uh, offer, uh, uh, you know, certain good settlement. Uh, like probably the buyer may may offer to the, the buyer may offer to pay uh, title ex, title policy. You know, the buyer may offer maybe five thousand or ten thousand dollars above asking, and he has a VA or FHA. It depends with every scenario, and we're gonna look with uh, every scenario with my client. You know, because, you know, we just trying to get him the best, you know, offer that he can make most money. From your experience so far doing real estate, what do most buyers or sellers, what do most people in general get wrong about the process? Uh, a bonus selling on the home. What people get wrong about the process is just, they just, uh, you know, if, if, if they get it wrong, you know, they are not using the right person. You know, most people... It, they, that's why you need a real estate agent. You see what I mean? Like me, I won't get the process wrong because this is what I do 24-7. I, 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 this is my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, so if you want to get it right, just call me 214-205-4169 so I can get it done for you. Great. So right. let's move to something else and we'll come back to real estate in a minute. So you have a nonprofit called, I believe it's called Big Dream Vision. Yes. Can you talk about how that started, your vision for Big Dream Vision and the whole process? Yeah, so uh, big, why so, why so, right, so important right, to you? Right. So Big Dream Vision I started in Dallas Baptist University, but that's what I had in my heart when I was growing up as an orphan because I wanted to help orphans and children around the world, in the community as a whole. And our Big Dream Vision is, uh, is, 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 is our vision is actually, you know, uh, uh, Christ-based. We are a Christ-based organization, actually. But our vision is actually to uplift the orphans and the children in the community who don't have opportunities. And uh, at this time, you know, we've helped a lot of boys, a lot of girls who came through academic scholarships, uh, basketball scholarships, and uh, it's been amazing. So Big Dream Vision is there to uplift uh, children and orphans and help them and empower them to uh, be able to touch other people, other children, you know, as they, as they prosper themselves. And uh, actually for me running Big Dream Vision, you know, is uh, actually I connected through my real estate because every every sale I close with real estate, I give ten percent towards my 
organization because I want to make sure that these children are taken care of. These some children in Africa who uh, don't have uh, uh, girls, who don't have sanitary pads and they're dropping out of school. You know, we don't want this happening. You know, so we buy sanitary pads, we provide that, you know, we help uh, 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 children, babies in, uh, who don't have uh, babies milk. You know, this, there's some babies who, uh, mothers, uh, some, 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 some women who don't want children, they just throw them away. So the, some of the children all end up in orphanages. They, they, they need baby's milk. So we provide things like baby's milk and things like that. So uh, we just there to help uh, children and orphans and make it happen and just be a change. You know, we want to see uh, this the, the, uh, change in the world. So talk about the challenges of, of having a nonprofit that's both in the United States and in Kenya, like we're not pretty much an international nonprofit. It has to be a challenge, I would think. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit challenge, but the thing is, uh, it's, it's, it works pretty good for us because we have a team all over the uh, country in, in Kenya, actually. And uh, we, we have a team in Kenya. We have a team in Tanzania. We have a team in Uganda. We have a team in Cameroon, in Benin. We have team. We, are, we have uh, uh, people in the, on the ground, okay? So... We, uh, you know, th these people, they do a good job and they, you know, when we have uh, anything that uh, we want them to do events or uh, projects, you know, they go ahead and make it happen. So it's, 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 yes, it's a challenge, but, you know, it works out good because we have a good system to whereby, you know, we, we touch. And you do like, I believe, life. basketball camps, like once or twice a year. Yes, we do basketball camps. We do, uh, you know, uh, we do missionary, uh, you know, uh, crusades. You know, we do medical camps and then things like that, you know, in the community just to help out as much as we can. So how does someone like become involved with the Big Dream Vision? Like how does someone become a client? Like how do you speak? Like how, how does someone get, get the um, rewards of being part of it? You, 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 you go out and find the kids yourself? Do people refer the kids to you? Yeah. So, so the thing is like we as Big Dream Vision, we uh, make sure we do, we, we, we vet the kids on our own. We go out there, we do. Uh, basketball camps, and we we vet these kids. Okay, we find the best of the best. Okay, so we do it on our own most of the time through our team. We do it on our own, and some people may may come to, from the community and, and tell us about a kid. We don't want them. We turn them down, but we they're gonna go through the process and we're gonna vet them down and see. If so they have to have certain kind of character, certain kind of values, good character, responsibility. How are they doing in class? What's you know? How was their talent level? So we look at different things. If they pass that, then they're good to go with us. And we can find them scholarships and things like that. And we can help them as much as we can. So talk about how the scholarship process works. So the scholarship process works whereby we have different schools that we are affiliated with. You know, so these schools are, you know. And the scholarship is, is like academic, athletic. We have academic and athletic. So the schools we are affiliated with uh, through Big Dream Vision, uh, you know, we, uh, they use us only uh, exclusively uh, for us Big Dream Vision. And uh, we, uh, you know, uh, try to find for them the best kids in in uh, in wh wherever we, you know, we get we find them from. So probably in, like in Kenya, in Benin, in different countries, and you know, we find them. We give we get them the scholarship and we approve them, you know. But we want the best of best of the best. You also have scholarships set in the United States too, correct? Yeah, we have scholarships in Dubai. We have in Australia. So uh, you know, so it just depends wherever the kids go. You know, and it definitely depends with wherever, you know, we, we get the opportunities at. So you might notice off the top of your head, but what percentage of your kids are accepted for scholarships? Are you able to get the scholarships? Uh, we, we are, are all the kids we have from Big Dream Vision is 100% going to be okay. accepted for scholarship because we already have a, 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 a position. Okay. So the thing is just for us to find the right. So if a kid's get such a big dream vision, that's a pretty a big step in, in that, their career, and like they're exactly. they're on the way to being successful. Exactly. exactly. So what's your your you know quote unquote vision of big dream vision? Uh, vision of big dream vision is to actually have a cycle of kids touching the lives of other children. So the kids we have, we want them to have bring do the same cycle. So they are part of us. They are our members. They are us. We are one. Okay. So that's why when I'm talking about being one is better, you know, being be, being uh being together actually is better than just being individual, you know. So we bring these kids and uh you know we want them to uh be able to continue the dream that we have, okay? And uh we're trying to also uh build a uh, 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 athletic department in uh in in Kenya and in, in different parts of the world 
but we want to make sure if we have an academy, you know, it's going to be an academy where kids can come and, and, and practice and, 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 and bring their talents to uh, our academy and we can help them to nurture that talent so we can be able to help them to get those opportunities around the world. Now, the, um, the academy is in, is in Nairobi, Kenya. It's like a headquarters? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you talk about you know, we want hard character, hard value people, in your, in your, you know, as, a, as a candidates. What's like a, a stereotypical person in your, in your, your, your big revision? Like, what's the average, like a stereotypical person? Like, someone's out there and they mm-hmm. want to say, I want to apply. What type of person does that person be? Uh, somebody there want to apply, you know, we, 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 the thing is like, we, it's just like a background check we do. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, we're going to talk to your, uh, your parent if you have any. We're going to talk to the people that is, who are around you, you know, people who saw you, see, seen you grow. So, uh, you know, it's just a lot of things we look at, you know, I mean, we vet them mm-hmm. and, and that's the character when we just want to get the, the, the best character and the best. So Ismo, talk about from your point of view the importance to you of being a role model for these people, for these kids. Uh, being a role model for myself is just uh, through my work. You know the way they see the me. You know uh, how I've accomplished what I've accomplished, but also you know by me pushing them to the next level. You see what I mean? If I don't push them to the next level and they they don't see they don't see it through me, they can't see it because even getting to the next level like NBA. Or, or a different uh, league, it's not easy. You know, you gotta really put in work each and every day, each and every day, each and every minute. You know, you can't be sleeping. You gotta push yourself, get better, always think the next step. And, and that's what I'm there for. I'm there to help them, you know, to instill that, uh, that, that focus in them, you know, you know that uh, you know, passion in them. And, but they have to have it in themselves. If they don't have it, then they don't want it. So you, you're doing a lot, you know, you have a real estate business, nonprofit, you know, you, exactly. have, you have your own life, you know, you're married, right. you know, you have personal life. Right. How do you prioritize stuff? Like, do you have a calendar you follow? Do you just wake every day, you wing it? Like, how do you plan what you're doing each right, day? Right, each right. So, so uh, uh, the thing is, I have a lot of things that I'm juggling, but, uh, you know, I have to have a, a plan, you know. So I, with me, what I do, I, I try to go with days. So Monday, uh, Monday actually is one of my busiest days, Tuesdays. You know, Wednesdays, I try to take it a little bit you know, slow and focus on my businesses, you know, that I'm doing and focus on big dream vision, you know, getting in touch with the members, focus on, uh, you know, uh, my business, you know, that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, work on. I focus on, uh, uh, you know, uh, things like that. And then I pick real estate uh, Thursday and Friday. But I just try to, you know, balance. And also it depends with uh, my, most of my clients, you know, because some, 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 in some months I have more clients some months I don't have a lot of clients, so it just depends with every every, every each, each and every day. But the most important thing, I try not to try to burn myself up because if you try to burn yourself up, you know you're trying to make it so uh, hard for you, you know, and you need to have family time and everything. So I just try to balance myself. So there's some people out there that they take pride like working 80 hour weeks. Mm-hmm. Some people work nine to five. Some people will, like you know work. 14 days, two days off. Right. Do you have a, something that you do, a schedule that you follow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, Monday, uh, Tuesday, I do real estate. Wednesday, I take a little bit time off myself. I do a little bit business for like big, big dream vision, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, some of any business I have with my uh, kids. And uh, uh, Thursday, Friday, I jump into real estate, you know, and uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday, I do uh, half of my real estate. But Sunday, I, try, I, I tend to try to take it off a little bit. How do you take care of yourself? How do you make sure you don't burn out? Like, how do you take your wellness and stuff like that? What, what, what do you do for that? Uh, man, I just, most of the time, I, 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 try, I tend to relax. You know, I tend to meditate. Meditation is very important. Uh, I, try, I tend to pray. You know, a prayer is like my meditation for me. I tend to uh, just uh, read books. You know, so that really calms me. And uh, I, I exercise most of the time. I, if I, I you know, this is a time of coronavirus being really tough to go to the gym, uh, but I try just to, you know, keep myself active. Is there anything that you do in particular for fun? Uh, yes, uh, you know, I do, uh, you know, you know, most of the time, you know, I, I relax, you know, if I can watch some movies, I can, you know, go play some basketball, I can, I can you know, go, do, go to the gym and things like that. Or, you know, with me and my wife, we go out, you know, to, to 
sport world and we just walk around and just have fun. Just just go out there and just drive around and you know just just live life. How often do you and your wife go back to Kenya? Uh, we go to Kenya every year, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tough uh, for us to go to Kenya uh, since we have our baby coming. You know, first baby. I'm so happy about that. And also we're gonna uh, because of coronavirus and uh, you know it's been a little bit tough for for us. But uh, we we're gonna still be, be going there. And you you do a lot of traveling, right? Yeah. Talk about your favorite place that you've been to so far. Uh, yeah, my favorite place I've been uh, actually uh, number one. You know, is uh, Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. Okay, Hong Kong is a is beautiful place. You know, big skyscrapers, people walk every day, but it's really nice. I love it. Uh, Paris is uh, the best of my uh, best. You know, I love it so much. Just in Paris, you know, I, I love uh the 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 air buildings i love the people you know the people is kind of is really tough to get into with them but i love the place i love uh, paris i love france you know uh you know uh kenya is great uh, where i've been you know so anybody want to go to kenya you know wildlife is there you're gonna love it talk about the points from your point of view of, of people like the one thing uh, you know America, we don't, we, don't, we don't travel enough right most right. americans like they think travel is like going from dallas to san antonio exactly. right right Talk about how to improve your life and improve just your outlook on life of being able to travel different places and why people should travel. Yeah, it's, it's really important because you know a lot of different cultures. You know, so travel is really important and I encourage a lot of people to travel because you're gonna know a lot of people uh, and it respect cultures. You know, uh, and and see what uh, people are about. You know, and you're gonna be a global person. You're gonna understand. You know, everybody. You're gonna understand a lot of people, and that. Also, as an American, you're gonna appreciate uh, uh, you're gonna appreciate being in America, and you ain't gonna take it for granted being in America. So, I would uh, suggest people to uh, go to different countries and travel and see, you know, different cultures and and blend into different cultures. Can you talk about a place you've been to where most people are like you? Why do you want? Why do you want to go there for? Like something place random that most people would not want to go to, but you've been there, had a good time. Oh yeah, definitely. And also, you know, like uh, in China, people don't really want to go sometimes because you know. They feel it's a communist country, but it's a really great country. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, probably, uh, you know, most uh, most of the places I've been, you know, it's, it's been really, you know, people have been, yeah, it's, it's nice. But I would say, you know, like uh, Qatar, you know, people feel like, oh, it's an Arabic country, whatever, but it's a great country. You know, it's a great country. It's developed, you know, and uh, they are really, uh, you know, they, they, they are really, really uh, on top of the world, I would say, you know, their GDP is really high and, you know, then people are like, oh my God, how would you go there? But I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they'll go like, I, I, I'm not going to go this country because the, the State Department says it's dangerous, right? Well, is it any more dangerous than Chicago or Houston or Detroit mm -hmm. or, you know, somewhere in you know, rural America? We just got to go there and be safe, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, Every yeah, place so, is dangerous to an extent. You just gotta, yeah, you just yeah. take precautions. And, yeah, you, know. you just gotta take precautions. I mean, like you know, if you if you and, and, then, and then one more thing before I cut you short, it's just uh, uh you know, just like in Dubai, you know, you can leave your phone there. Like remember, I, I forgot my iPhone on top of the car, and uh, I was in the in my in the in the, in the apartment in, in four hours. I was like, oh, where's my phone? When I went down, it was uh, just right on top of my car, and yeah. people were passing. Everybody was there. Yeah. So. Just take, take precautions. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. but it's different. In the United States, you'd be gone. No, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> is, is there a country on your bucket list, a city on your bucket list you haven't been to yet you want to go to? Uh, no, Thailand. Thailand? Yeah, yeah, that's, a great, that's a great place. Uh, yeah, I, I want to go there. I want to go to uh, Australia. Uh, you know, uh, more. I want to go there. I want to go to, uh, you know, uh, Monaco. You know, so. so back to real estate. Do you work for another real estate agency or you have your own business? Uh, yeah, I'm, this is my, you know, I'm an independent contractor. Okay. So I have a broker. Okay. Yeah. So what's your vision for yourself as a real estate agency? Is it, you know, to play, be like, maybe like a Grant Cardone, you have like all these real estate right. work for the United States and you like, you know, hit everyone or what's your... Yeah, so my, my, my vision for my real estate business actually is just, uh, you know, I really love to do what I'm doing to just help my clients, you know, buy and sell, you know, that's what I really loved and that's what I really wanted to do, you know, but I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to jump into brokerage and whatever, because I have a great broker that takes care of everything, you know, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about that, you know, uh, and he 
he makes sure that everything goes according to uh you know whatever needs to be done uh but um my my just looking at the vision is is is, is big because i uh, in uh, i want to jump into in a lot of investments mm-hmm. you know real estate investments myself how has coronavirus affected the real estate business no oh, definitely has affected the uh, real estate business you look at the interest rates now they have really you know you know plunged down you know and a stock market you know plunged down so you know it is hitting the real estate business with the interest rates but at the same time it's, it's shocking to see you know these prices going up but uh, you know at the same time you know you know you see a lot of uh, less inventory right now you know most sellers don't want to put inventory out there because they don't know if they're going to get a house because now people don't want to move so there's less inventory and prices are jumping up yes uh, yes, can you share your social media for the people who reach out to you? Oh, definitely. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, follow me at uh, Instagram, uh, Doc Real Estate, D O C Real Estate, or uh, you can go to my uh, you know website, Ishmael at uh, Ishmael uh, Realtor dot com, I S H M A E L Realtor dot com, or you can go ahead and uh, look at my Facebook page, Ishmael. A, um, Ishmael Omandi on my Facebook page and follow me, uh, Ishmael Omandi Realtor. And you can follow me there. Uh, feel free to call me, 214-205-4169. I'll get it down for you. I will help you out. We're going to make it. Uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to get that home sell, sold. We're going to get you by. You know, that's the most important thing. Uh, or you can go ahead and just write me an email, you know, at uh, Ishmael at realtyagent.com. And for our listeners, we're going to have the links to all the social media on the show notes. You can find the show notes at www.cabinetshlblog.com. Yes, is there anything that you want to talk about or anything I didn't ask you that you want to talk about? Uh, nothing much. I think you have asked me about anybody. It's great, man. I, I love it. Cool. You know, it's great. Uh, other than that, you know, if you just want to reach me, if you want to know anything about real estate investment, you know, about, uh, you know, international investing, you know, reach up to me because uh, this is what I do. I've worked into international business, uh, international real estate, and I'm here. So if you need any, if you need me to answer any questions, feel free to call me 214-205-4169. That's the number. So yes, we're coming to everyone's talk. Can you give us any wisdom or advice or anything you want to talk about? Stay focused. Be better than yesterday. Yes, bro. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And to our listeners, thanks for your time as well. Remember, remember to be great every day.